Hey guys, Sarkat here, and I wanted to give another quick starter guide uh, for the upcoming Legacy League, which goes live in like seven or eight hours or something PogChamp like that. Now, this is a build that I've played a lot in the past and is what I would be using as my League starter if I wasn't playing Duo, and that is the Pathfinder Oros Flicker Strike build. Why Pathfinder? Why Oros? Why Flicker Strike? Why for a League starter? Okay, so if you don't know, Oros is a unique two-handed sword which does no physical damage. It is a purely elemental sword and it has culling strikes against burning enemies, gain a frenzy charge if an attack ignites an enemy. Basically, get a bunch of ignite chance, use the sword, flicker for days, seems good. Now, why would I use this over some of the other options? Oros is always really cheap. Oros has always been a really good league starter. It can clear into very high content quite easily. It can clear most things in the game without too much trouble. And it is cheap, which is the perfect kind of thing that you want in a league starter. And there are a lot of items you can use once you get a budget. A good example being is a Combs Heart is an amazing item for this build. And that is obviously, you know, if you decide to stay on this path just the first week to get some easy currency, that's a really nice pickup. Same with Devoto's Devotion. Devoto's Devotion is just a really nice pickup. Uh, the reduced physical damage doesn't affect us at all, gives a bunch of attack speed, chaos, res, and mood speed. Seems really good. Everything else about the kit is all really cheap. Oro's cheap, windscreen cheap, Sybil's cheap, and food and taste cheap. Vessel, vessel's sort of expensive, you don't need to have it, but you can have 100% uptime as a Pathfinder, especially a Pathfinder with Oro's. That's the main thing which really uh, carries the build, is... The clear speed of flicker, if you've never played it, is you press down the button and you've just completed five maps. Because you're a Pathfinder, because you have so, such crazy flask generation, we're just always in vessel mode. It is Pogchamp, having it zero is, zero is really cheap. Everything in there is basically pretty budget. The other thing you really need, and this is very important, is a Fireborn Crimson Jewel. Fireborn increases in reductions to other damage types and radius are transformed to apply to fire damage. So if you put one right here on the tree, it converts all of these nodes and all of these nodes into juicy, juicy fire damage. So, otherwise it's pretty straightforward. You just make use of the new LED deeps on the wheel, on the tree, come through, get the frenzy, get some leech, get a frenzy. You can go IR if you want to. I've chosen not to because I'm running a dual cast blasphemy and I just don't want to fit in mana reservation to also run grace on top of that. If you want to just pick up to convert the evasion you're currently wearing, go for it, but whatever. Pick this up, come through, get some more Ellie damage, fire pen, get some more life, life and armor, go up the jewel. One quick point, we're touching all of the endurance charges on the tree. You can pick up the endurance charges if you want to, and I would highly recommend using, um, is it Duresso's Defiance? Um, yes, I would highly recommend using Duresso's Defiance as your budget starting unique chest for this build. The reason being is it's very good start of league. They're always really cheap. It gives you life. It gives armor and evasion. This is a hybrid armor evasion build. It gives you um, some chance to dodge, which is always nice. But this is the nice thing about it. So it gives you gain endurance charge on kill. You're a flicker build. You always have max endurance charges because you just clear through content like that. And then when we get hit, you lose the endurance charges and you gain um, onslaught. And this has been buffed, so it now gives Onslaught for two seconds. So even just using this chest as is, this is basically a chest which gives you Onslaught for free and occasional endurance charges. And it's one of those things, if you don't get hit because it's Flicker, you move so quickly, the mobs can't really attack you. So it basically just, it gives you clear speed through the Onslaught. And then if you're stuck on a particular enemy for a while, the endurance charges give you a bit of mitigation. Again, this isn't best on slot, but this is just a nice early item. And if you want to stick for this for a long time, I would maybe recommend picking up the endurance charges as well for some extra mitigation. Otherwise, pick up RT. That's a random follow notification. I should have turned that off, but cheers that dude. Um, and come through into Templar. You can go Ellie Overload and get cursed this way. If you decide to do that, then you want to change the routing on the tree. You want to come up this way, come up through here, grab this, grab this, grab this. Uh, I've done both RT and Ellie Overload versions of this build before. This build I've played a lot in the past. The RT version just needs less gear because you don't need to worry about accuracy and stuff. This will have a smoother leveling process. As you can see, it has a lot of life. A lot of life. Even without the combs, you're still sat at 5.4k life without a uh, body armor equipped. This is a very tanky build. 
And yeah. Mm. So what would I recommend for skills? And the bandits, oak, attack speed, frenzy charge. Right. Um, I recommend you have a second Oros in weapon swap. The reason being, Oros are dirt cheap. And sometimes you want to run ignite immune content. And yeah. So in your main setup, you'll have a flick strike, flick strike, multi strike, melee splash. Very important. Weapon elemental damage, fire pen. That's your five link. If you get a six link, throw in faster attacks, but you really don't need a six link with this build. You could also just throw in fortify just to make sure that you have a nice easy fortify. I would probably throw in fortify over uh, fast tracks, but play around with it. In a random floating four link, have ancestral war chief, elemental focus, weapon elemental damage, and fire pen. This is just some additional single target damage. If you choose to, you can have a weapon swap cyclone. And that's Cyclone, Weapon Elemental Damage, Fire Pen, Ellie Focus, Conk Effect. That's if you're doing Ignite Immune content or you just want a little bit of juicy single target. Or sometimes, let's say you're doing your lab running and you don't want to be flickering around in lab. Fair enough, use Cyclone. Blasphemy, Flammability, Ellie Weakness. Again, we're getting the Jewel Curse from the Windscreen Boots, which have recently been buffed to give slightly more movement speed, which is very nice. And they also give us some nice elemental scaling. And then Immortal Call, Leap Slam, Fast Attacks. Now this is the combs setup. The second you drop the combs, it becomes much easier. You can then fit in stuff like golems, you can fit in vile skills, you can fit in stuff like fortify on your leap slam. I left an open socket here. This open socket can either be a vile skill of your choosing or a golem of your choosing. And again, this is built around the combs version. So just sort of flesh it out. If you don't run a combs, which none of you will be in a league start, you basically have seven sockets to play with. I would recommend having a stone golem, a vile lightning trap, Fortify on your Leap Slam, and then probably also either Vol Grace or Vol Haste with increased duration, whichever you fancy. Now, most importantly, I kind of skipped over this. Why Pathfinder? So, whenever I make this build, people say, Dude, Slayer, man, go Slayer. Dude, go Chieftain. No, go Pathfinder. Why do you want to go Pathfinder? Vessel of Inktar. Hmm. But ignoring that. Veteran Boa gives us 10% Ellie Pen. Enemies you kill that are affected by elemental status settlements, burns, grant 100% increased flash charges. We always kill stuff affected by status settlements because our whole build is built around ignite. So we always gain ridiculous amounts of flash charges, meaning we can easily, easily, easily sustain our vessel. This is 8% reduced elemental damage taken, aka reduced reflect damage. Reflect is scary in this build. This is also why we run the Sybil's Lament. No longer an issue. Also gives us a chance for our vessel not to consume charges. Have I mentioned Vessel yet? Immune to status ailments during um, Flask Effect. This means you can go really greedy with Unique Flask, which is Pogchamp. 40% uh, increased elemental damage, this is really good. And then 20% chance to freeze, shock, and ignite while using a Flask. This is more chance to ignite than you would get as a Chieftain, which is important. They only get 15%. So you get more chance to ignite as a Pathfinder. You don't get any chance to ignite as a Slayer. You can also do um, stuff with Elementalist. But with the amount of just like raw Ellie Deeps that's just been added to this part of the tree, just do it, man. Just do it. With this 8% reduced reflect damage taken here, the 10% reduced reflect damage taken here, the extra 10% chance to ignite, which has been added here, like so much juice. I like this was one of my favorite builds, and it was like my go-to starter build. And it just got like crazy buffed in this patch. And I wish I wasn't playing duo so I could play this build. Basically, guys, if you are undecided on your League Starter, just play this. It's tanky, has a really easy time leveling. You can transition to all sorts of different things. If you don't want to play Flicker, then drop the Flicker, do Cyclone, whatever. Ezzy Pezzy, Ezzy Pezzy. The only really important things to note is make sure you have Wed on as much gear as possible. Belt has to have Wed. Ring has to have Wed. Ideally, you have an Opal with Wed, but Wed, 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 Wed. Amulet, Wed. Sybil's Lament, cheap wed and reduce reflect. To be honest, you probably don't even need this anymore. You can just go with another opal ring. But this is like to get a nice and early on and gives you that 40% reduced reflect uh, LE damage taken, meaning you're not going to kill yourself. You have the 40% reduced here. You have the 10% on the tree. That's 50% reduced elemental reflect damage taken and the 8% reduced elemental damage taken um, from Pathfinder. You'll be a okay. Now, these are the three flasks I recommend. Forbidden Taste, in my opinion, is best in slot in every single life build, and you want to be fitting in Chaos Res on your gear. Again, I haven't put resistances on my rares, so use your rares to cap out your resistances, not too difficult. You can also use jewels to cap out resistances, 
You can easily get 10 all res on your jewels, so one here, one here. You can fill in this node here for more resistances if you need it. Get your resists. Get your resists. Very important. Um, yeah, I can't really say enough good about this build. Now, one other thing you can do is if you want to go full Mame, you can ideally run a Taste of Hate and then a Ruby Flask here. The reason why that's important is with all of the flask effectiveness you get from Pathfinder, you can get ridiculous levels of max res. You don't have to do it. I did it before and I had a build with like 88 all max res and it also has the 8% reduced early damage taken in there. All things to consider. Anyway, I'm starting to ramble at this point. Legacy League hype. I'm Taki. This is a Crypt T. Have a good day. Bye bye.